Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we're going to see an example of all the things I complain about, all the small engineering features and tolerances that I normally complain about. This is an example of those things done really really well so stay tuned to find out why. Now in this video we're going to look at the 9Velo MT30 XC slash trail carbon wheel set. You may not have heard of 9Velo but they have been on the channel before with their road wheel set. That was about six to eight months ago and I couldn't fault that wheel set. It passed all the kind of aero tests, the stiffness test, the spoke tension balance test, all really, really well. The hubs are standout quality of this brand because they have a tie-up with another company in Xiamen in China. And if you don't know, 98% I would say of all carbon wheels made in the world are made in Xiamen in China. They are the best at doing it. So don't be a brand snob. I know a lot of mountain bikers can be a little bit brand snobby and they you know, will only pick from the top kind of Western brands with the really heavy Western marketing. But these are direct from the source. Now, the lady behind this company is one of the OG Xiamen carbon wheel set universe founders out there. And I've been talking to her for about 10 years when she was at another company. Now she's set up a company on her own to cherry pick all the best parts. So they may not have the blingiest marketing out there. She knows how to do customer service. The price is, eight, I think, 860 US dollars, which is super, super competitive when you're looking at the weight of this wheel set, which is 1330 grams. Now, the weight of that is the center lock version. I am using the six bolt disc version, so it is a little bit heavier, about 20 grams heavier. For a wheel set designed for trail use and XC and kind of, I would say, harsh XC and trail use, that weight is super, super impressive. And even with a chunky enduro tire like I've got here, front and rear, it almost seemed a shame to put 100 grams of sealant in each tire front and rear now the sealant tip we'll come to that in a bit because i've got a bit of a tip for you when it comes to sealant these hubs although they don't say it on the hubs they're actually made by a company called hworks now they don't say that on the website i don't actually know if they want that to be public knowledge or not but hworks is one of the biggest hub oem manufacturers and factories now there are branded nine velo but the hworks hub was also on the road wheel set and when it comes to the small engineering features like i said like the hub preload, the axle tolerances, the bearing fits, whether it's an H6 or an H5 or a G6 fit, these are done exceptionally well. Now, I actually met this company at Eurobike along with the founder of Nine Velo, and they produce the axles and the bearing shell machinings down to one or two microns. So that's 0.001 or 0.002 millimeters. Now, if you don't know what I mean by engineering fits and tolerances, uh, that comes down to how the shafts and housings interact with the bearings and the axles inside the hub. Now, you might not think that's very important. You might think it's really easy to get something spinning on an axle with some bearings, but actually it's super difficult. It does come down to, you know, these tiny microns of tolerance. You've got tolerance stack up and it all affects bearing life, noise, wear, preload. Now, it's actually quite a complex thing to do repeatedly in mass production. DT Swiss do it with the 240, one of the best hubs, in my opinion, in the world. And this, I would say, is a hub that is up there in terms of that level of repeatability and machining quality and hub preload and tolerances and everything. Now, if you want to know a bit more about shaft and hole fits, I'll leave a link to it, a video in the description below where I had quite an issue on another wheel set concerning that and it goes into a bit more of the engineering behind that but anyway those are the hubs they're available in loads of different anodized colors i've got the purple here i've just loved anodized purple since you know my my teens when i was mountain biking and that was the kind of color to have i like the uh, 80s inspired font on the on the decals on the rims the the venerable cx ray from sapin the best spoke in the world for basically road and mountain bike i just can you just can't fault it they basically never break touch wood um they're light and a super strong highest fatigue life of any spoke in the world and all my favorite wheels are built with sapham cx rays the nipples although they're quite bling because they're anodized aluminium i would prefer to see brass nipples for a bike that's going to be ridden all through the winter and summer without kind of washing it too much because the aluminium nipples even when they're anodized they do tend to corrode a little bit they are the sapham seals anodized aluminium nipples so they are a very very high grade nipple but Brass just is a bit better when you're truing it after a long, harsh winter of use, um, just because they don't seize, they don't corrode so much, and they're a bit more forgiving when you're trying to true it. Rims, super light rim, 30 millimeter internal, comes tubeless taped, a much better tubeless tape job than I could do myself, so that's really good. 30 millimeter internal, 28 millimeter deep, and that even on the XC side of things now is the is the width to go for. I wouldn't really go for anything less than 30 millimeter internal. It gives the tire a bit more volume, 
bit more air volume to seal a puncture so you lose less pressure when you do get a puncture even when you're tubeless. Calm rims aren't for everyone on a mountain bike. If I was going to ride this on an enduro bike, well, I, I probably just wouldn't. Uh, the impact toughness of carbon is just not as good as aluminium when you take rock strikes and stuff or even if you're getting a rock going into the side of the rim when you you know the tire tread can flick up rocks quite a lot and they come in towards the rim so even not a direct impact even just scratches and stuff i would prefer an aluminium rim but if you're doing kind of like light trail use or nothing too rocky uh, if you want an x you know an xc bike with a very very lightweight build 1330 grams um, this is a great option and this is probably going to be the wheel setup that I kind of do all my winter training on, um, gravel and XC kind of riding. Maybe not too much rocky stuff for that. I'll stick to the aluminium rims. But for 869 USD, you really can't fault this wheel set because not only are you getting, like I said, those cherry picked components from one of the founders of the carbon wheel industry in China, you're getting the customer support that she knows how to deal with because she's been doing that for years, 10 years, probably more than anyone else out of any kind of Chinese wheel company. So I do recommend this wheel set. I'll leave the link in the description below and I'll also leave a voucher code because I do like to promote products that are actually engineered really well. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I get on this channel is half baked, it gets grilled. There's a lot of beta shit that I get sent and it really frustrates me because I wanna be able to promote these products. I like, you know, seeing companies do well and so this is this is a good one i think in general it's a really high performance wheel set for the money i can't think of anything else out there apart from the elite that is going to offer you the same amount of performance for the money now like on all the road wheel set tests that i do i do like a spoke tension balance test i'll leave the results on screen for that with the mountain bike stuff that's a little bit more nuanced because when you've got a quite a, you know a heavy casing enduro tire like i'm riding here because they're quite tight on the rim they can actually lower the spoke tension quite a lot once you put the tire on so for this test i've actually done the spoke tension balance test um, after mounting the tire because there's no point riding it without a tire and even then you can see that you know on any tubeless wheel set if you're riding with a tubeless tire the spoke tensions will actually come down a bit once the tire is mounted do they come down in an even manner and does that affect the trueness of the wheel so you can see even here when I've put the tire on, I've measured the spoke tensions all around the wheels, front and rear, 28, 28, three cross on both. Only a couple of outliers with that 5% mean of the average spoke tension. So that's really, really good to see. And the trueness, even with the tires mounted, is within 0.05 millimeters on the run out. So that is, that's just getting down to like the surface roughness of the, of the wheel, to be honest. Like even when the, the dial gauge passes the deck or the water transfer on the wheel, that's the biggest run out that I can get. So they're built absolutely beautifully hopefully that's going to last i've ridden them as heavy as i can for the, the two months that i've been riding them and yeah i literally can't fault this wheel set if you possibly could ask them for brass nipples you could if you wanted a bit more longer lasting or a bit more you know safety net that's going to push the weight up a little bit per wheel maybe like 20 grams per wheel and obviously they're not going to be able to anodize them in these funky colors that i've got them here but um anyway coming on to that tubeless that tubeless tip I refuse to buy stand sealant at $20, $30 a quart. It's an absolute rip-off uh, mountain bike or road bike tubeless sealant. And don't forget, tubeless tyres were invented way before mountain bikes did them. And in my professional engineering career, I work quite a lot with off what we call OTR vehicles, off-the-road vehicles like mining trucks and stuff like that. Now, we use a stuff called OKO. O -K -O. Now, this is a company that's been around for ages. It's tubeless sealant and it has lots of rubber and cotton particles in the stuff it is quite thick so i do dilute it on the mountain bike with either water or a bit of antifreeze a bit of glycol um, so it gets all around the rim tape and seals all those little holes up around the rim tape it's about three or four times as cheap as a mountain bike specific tubeless sealant like stands or pts or muck off and i think it works a lot better because there's so many different sizes of particle within that stuff i'll never go back to using mountain bike specific sealant on any of my bikes because it's just a rip-off it's basically the same stuff and this is a lot better in my in my opinion and it lasts a lot longer and it's got a bigger variation of particle sizes in it so it seals the tiny bits and it seals the the bigger gashes as well because the the cotton and the rubber it has more cotton and rubber in it than i think mountain bike specific stuff does so it just i really rate that so i'll leave the link to that in the description below everyone should get on that and just ditch the mountain bike stuff now oco do have a bike specific sealant but i've tried it and i would just use the normal one just use the general use one it works a bloody wheelbarrows sit on lawnmowers up to sort of four by fours and off the road vehicles so i hope you enjoyed that 
I can't fault Nine Velo again. They've sent two wheel sets to the channel now. They've both been super consistent in terms of, you know, all the engineering features, the hub preload, the tolerances and everything, and the finish of the wheels is just insane. And another thing I really like about this wheel set is that they give you some really, really nice reusable cloth wheel bags, which I've not really seen on any wheel sets lately, apart from the really high-end Western stuff. And then that's a really, really nice touch. And thanks to all the patrons again, all this stuff that I get, all the stuff that I get sent to review, all the new products, even the classified hub tests and everything, they all go on the Patreon channel first before any of this goes out on YouTube. So thanks to those guys for supporting the channel. I'll do as many reviews as I can. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.